Good day. Welcome to another Creaky Gamers Firefight Battle Report. Let's go. Okay, welcome to Battle Report number six, I think it is, and the Forge Fathers and the Enforcers. And we're just doing the recon roll, and the Enforcers win the recon roll. All right, you maggots. Army overview. Get in line. And then uh, just having a quick look at the armies again. Uh, the Enforcers have scouted up their right flank with a unit of three bikes. One's got a missile launcher. Uh, there's a sniper team up on the tower there. Uh, there's Enforcer operatives in the woods. Um, that's the Enforcer captain or the Peacekeeper captain with his bodyguard. Uh, there's some Breach and Eradicate uh, close combat guys there. And a couple of engineers with flamers again. And some more close combat breach and eradicate guys. And another unit of enforcer operatives. So same as the last battle. And then the Forge Fathers. I've got uh, two Iron Ancestors. I painted them up so I wanted to try them out. One's got the double cannon. The other one's got the cannon and close combat weapon. There's a Steel Warrior Huskarl in there. And a unit of six Steel Warriors with a missile launcher. And then out on this flank, there's another unit of six Steel Warriors with a missile launcher. There's the Forge Lord with his two Forge Guard and a unit of five Thorgrim in the woods there. And then off the table are six Hammerfist Drop Troopers. Creaky Gamers are go. Turn one. Firefight. Let's go. All right, let's go with turn one and the command roll. I think we both end up with about six or so command points, so plenty. And the first action is the uh, bikes. They're going to use Firestorm and they're going to do five wounds to the five Thorgarim. And so things don't start well for the Forge Fathers. They've lost their little close combat unit on turn one. They didn't have a transport to hide in or anything. They're in cover, but they still got shot off the table on turn one. And then the bikes scoot back out of danger. So not a good start for the Forge Fathers. They're down a unit already. Uh, next up, the Peacekeeper Captain puts up his Resilient 2 Aura. And then he runs through the woods. Should have only moved six, but anyway, he's going to run through the woods up behind the building. So he's got uh, his Aura up and he's in a strong position. So... Good start for the Enforcers. Okay, so the um, the key area in this game is going to be that building in the centre of the table which provides good line of sight blocking terrain and a good place for the Enforcers to launch their assaults. So the um, Forge Fathers are trying to put some firepower into that building but it's not doing much damage. Uh, we get desperate and we're going to drop the Hammerfist drop troopers down. So they come down and fire their Inferno drills into the building as well. Uh, so there's a lot of firepower going into that building. There's some breach and eradicate enforcers in there. Uh, but uh, the extra armor and the building and the cover and so on, uh, we don't make much of a dent into those uh, guys. Uh, the engineers have moved up there as well with their flamers and then some more uh, breach and eradicate just, uh, enforcers move up there as well. So uh, it doesn't look too good. Those guys are going to be able to launch their assaults out of that building next turn. And in the final activation, the forge guard and the forge lord move up and put some more fire into that building. But uh, don't even do a scratch to the enforcers in there. And it looks like the Enforcers have finished going first. And we're just tidying up the table for round two. So the Enforcers will be acting first in round two. So uh, the Forge Fathers look like they're in a bit of trouble. And maybe the Iron Ancestors might be in a bit of trouble against the anti-tank weapons of those assault guys. Turn two. So the Enforcers, they get the first turn on turn two, or the first activation. And those three uh, Enforcer operatives, the guys with the Breach and Eradicate Enforcers, come charging out of the building um, and make mincemeat of the uh, Iron Ancestor. Didn't even break a sweat. The, um, then they get to activate again. They spend a command point and the other Breach and Eradicate Enforcers go into my Hammerfist Drop Troopers. 
and they make short work of them as well. But one guy does survive. The leader survives. He does hit them back and he takes one out. But essentially that unit is gone as well because they've been activated now. They're broken. Uh, they're going to, he retreats back into the woods and the, um, those enforcers just consolidate back a little bit. So uh, it's not looking good for the Forge Fathers. Essentially, we've lost three units. Um, so the Iron Ancestor went down, and the Thorgrim went down, and now the Hammerfish Drop Troopers have been hammered as well. Not a good start. So the rest of the turn was a bit of uh, shooting backwards and forwards. Uh, the Iron Ancestor moved up, and... That unit of breach and eradicate in forces that were there, we were trying to shoot them, but then they used, I think, the rapid advanced, and they moved back into the building. So he still has um, some strong anti-tank troops there, and they're using the medics to revive them and so on. So the enforcers are really on top. Um, the forge lords cowering in this building, and the bikes are going to be shooting at him as well. So the forge lord and some steel warriors pinned down in that building. Uh, the Iron Ancestor, the last Iron Ancestor moves up. Uh, so he's going to, we're going to be going first next turn because we're running out of units. So we finished activating first. Um, the lone Hammerfist drop trooper, the leader, he uh, fa fails his nerve test, but inspired he rolls an eight. So he's going to hang around. Turn three. Okay, so on to turn three, and the last defiant act of the Forge Fathers, the Iron Ancestor. Uh, we're going to go first. We finished activating first last turn, and he's still got um, some of those Breach and Eradicate Enforcer guys in the building. So the Iron Ancestor is going to go straight between them and charge into the Peacekeeper Captain. And he takes out, uh, does a couple of wounds to them. And they might do one in return. So the Iron Ancestor actually wins the combat. So he's activated the uh, Peacekeeper Captain. So now he's a sitting duck in the middle there. In between all those uh, uh, anti-tank weapon units. There's a little bit of exchange of fire. And then I get desperate and I send the Steel Warriors into those uh, enforcers. But they fail to do a single wound. Uh, it was a last defiant act, and then they come in and clean up the Steel Warrior Huskarl. So it turned into an utter disaster for the Fell Forge Fathers. Um, and then more Breach and Eradicate Enforcers come out of the building. Their numbers are increasing because they're getting healed by a medic. So they were down to four, but they're back up to five again. And then a small victory for the Iron Ancestor. He actually draws this combat. They take two wounds each. So that was lucky. Uh, so they just uh, push each other back. He's pinned and everything. So they're both pinned and so on. Uh, then the uh, Hammerfist Drop Trooper. Uh, he fails his headstrong roll. So he just removes his pin and shoots at those guys in the woods next to him. And he misses. Pretty much the end of the game. There's not much left. And then to add insult to injury, these uh, Enforcer operatives decide to shoot at the Iron Ancestor. And even without any tank weapons, they're able to take him out. And so pretty much it's all over for the Forge Fathers. Um, and so the you know, enforcers are just mopping up and so on. And the Hammerfish Drop Trooper fails his nerve test. And so we call it quits at that. Uh, the mission was to claim that building in the center of the table. Um, and... It was a bit of a disaster for the Forge Fathers. Don't go away. Don't touch that dial. Stay tuned for the Creaky Gamers post-battle analysis. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Let's uh, talk about what went wrong for the Forge Fathers. Uh, the mission was Occupy, so we had to control that building in the center. And I think we didn't bring enough close combat troops. I just wanted to try out the... Uh, iron ancestors and i've got two of them so i put two of them into a list and um one with the double big uh, doom pattern doom storm pattern whatever it is and the other one with the big hammer i thought they would do okay they're heavy armored and so on so but their weapons don't have enough ap for my liking those uh cannons they've got plenty of shots but ap1 
And then when I did charge one in with the big hammer, he's got assault five. So luckily they were out in the open, so he hit on fours for charging. So he did okay, but they're not really good at shooting. They're not really good at close combat either. They don't have enough AP on their weapons to really do much damage to enforcers. So in my only really other close combat troop I had was the Thorgrim, a little unit of five. Had to squeeze in another troop choice because I wanted the two Iron Ancestors. So they didn't really do much. So I think the the Brocker and the Thorgrim are the two hitty close combat units that you need to fend off the enemy. And I put a lot of firepower, as you can see there, put a lot of firepower into that building, but most of it was AP1 from the two Iron Ancestors and so on, which barely did a scratch to the uh, Enforcers. And they had their resilience up and their medics and bringing guys back and so on. So it was an uphill battle. We weren't really killing enough. And the uh, Enforcers you know, did a lot of good work with their rapid advance um, command order and so on moving around moving up attacking charging and then moving six inches back into buildings and so on so it was a bit of an uphill battle behind the eight ball from the start losing the Thorgrim but they're only a little unit of five so they weren't going to do much anyway so need to rethink the um the composition but it was just an experiment to try out the iron ancestors i think i prefer the um brocker and the close combat units and some long-range firepower from the weapons platforms and maybe the tank. So thanks for watching, and we will experiment with the Forge Fathers further. I'll give the Forge Guard one more chance, but I don't think they have enough output, and they're definitely lacking in decent command abilities. Some armies, you look at their command abilities, you think, yes, I'll use that one and that one and that one. The Forge Fathers, they're a bit underwhelming. A couple of good ones, but um, need to rethink how I'm going to use them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, shorter form because of the noisy, noisy air conditioner again, but we'll fix that up for next time. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Well, that was different. Yep, lousy, but different. <laughs>